I'm Robert Scoble, and you might know I love cars. Uh, you know, I don't have the money to go buy a new Tesla, but someday. <laughs> and anyways, uh, these guys uh, uh, started a company called Automatic that lets you do all sorts of fun things with your car underneath your dashboard. We're going to get dirty with cars, starting right now with Automatic. So who are you? I'm uh, Tejo Kote. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Automatic. And this is a company that came out of research that my co-founder Jerry and I were conducting at UC Berkeley. And so we were trying to understand how people use cars and how do they make choices around the use of cars. And we realized that, you know, people spend a lot of money on cars in the US, about $8,000 a year, right? Of which about $3,000 is spent just on gas. And the surprising thing is that they don't know anything about how that money is spent. And very small changes in driving style can lead to large savings, up to a third, right? Yeah. And uh, as engineers, what bothered us was that your car is a computer. Right? It's the most expensive computer that you own, but it's a black box. You don't have access to any of that information that can help you save a lot of money. And that's when we started working on automatic. And this is the hardware device which connects to the car and then connects your smartphone to your car. And as we were working on it, we realized that there's a lot more that we can do. So Automatic does four things. It gives you insight and feedback about how you actually use your car and you know, ways in which you can save a lot of money. It, because the smartphone is talking to the computer in your car, it knows when something goes wrong. So if that check engine light comes on, it's no longer this opaque thing that you know nothing about. Yep. You know, we can immediately give you more information on your smartphone and tell you what does that even mean. Is it that something as stupid as your gas cap being loose or is your engine going to explode now, right? So tell you what it actually means. And third, it always knows where your car is parked, which is especially helpful in urban areas or in areas where you're not familiar with. And finally, it can detect a crash and automatically call for emergency services. And so as a whole, we think of automatic as a smart driving assistant. And yep. uh, yeah. Very cool. It's a $70 product, right? It is. It and is. this goes into the uh, connection underneath the dash where yes. the, the mechanic also hooks in. Absolutely. Well. That's the same port. And almost, not almost, every car sold since 1996 in the US has that port. It is usually below your steering wheel, you know, in, around your uh, knees. And uh, you just plug this device in there and that is your gateway to the computer of the car and that device talks to your phone over bluetooth so now your phone is connected to your car okay there so right there there's a, a few things one it, uh, i bet people are worried does this void the warranty or mess with the warranty because if i just brought a brand new tesla or bmw i really care about that warranty right so yeah so the warranty is not an issue because 80% of all cars that get serviced don't really get serviced in the dealerships, right? They get serviced in the aftermarket. And uh, so when you take your car in there, you can plug in a similar device. He plugs in, the mechanic plugs in a similar device. There are lots of other aftermarket products similar to automatic. It's just that they've always been the hobbyist and enthusiast type of products. And as I said, the port has been around since 1996, right? So. We, I think for the first time, we think of it as a consumer product that any car owner can use, you know, any smartphone, smartphone owner and car owner, and they can use that product and that's why we created Automatic. Yep. The other thing is uh, that this, this new system brings up is uh, privacy, because you, there's a GPS in here or how do you get the, the location of my car? So there is no uh, GPS in the device itself. That's part of the reason why we can make it that inexpensive and affordable is because you are carrying a you know, connected computer in your pocket all the time, right? And so we make use of as many of the sensors and connectivity that your phone provides. Yeah. And so we use GPS on your phone. Okay. So you know where I parked it because that's always a problem when I go to uh, on flights. I'm going on three flights in the next f four weeks. So it's always like, oh, where did I park? <laughs> it was absolutely, you know, right? yeah. And so it memorizes the last time I was near the car. Is so that what it does is the moment you switch off the ignition, the link, this we call this device the automatic link. It tells the phone, hey, ignition off. Yeah. And so the phone then grabs a high accuracy location point from uh, you know, using GPS. And so it knows how it's you know, where the car is parked. And because it is also connected to the cloud, 
you know you can provide permission to someone else you share a car with for example if you park it somewhere and then your partner wants to then pick it up they can just open up their phone the automatic app and they know where it's parked so where i was going it was uh now that the the car itself knows a lot about me and is probably reporting that to your cloud services uh, what's the privacy like? Because uh, Rocky, the first thing he asked was about privacy, and, and a lot of people probably are worried. Hey, I'm I'm worried that some thief is going to figure out where my car is and, and track me or stalk me or steal my car or do something crazy, right? Yeah. So we are really paranoid about user privacy, and we have a very detailed policy for those who want to go and look at it on our website at automatic.com, and we talk about you know, what are the different kinds of data points we collect. Who, who has access to it, what do we do with it, and, and we go into great detail because this is something that we think a lot about. And we understand that you know, data like the location of your car and where you drive and things like that are very private. But we also think that the value that having the insight and information that you never had before, we think is really, really valuable. And so the, fundamentally the data that we collect, as we say in the privacy policy, it, if it's your data, you know, it's yours. And we are never going to share it with anybody else. Now, and that leads into the next question. I have a 19-year-old son. I le lend him my car once in a while. What can I track about his behavior in my car? <laughs> as of now, <laughs> as of now, it is nothing. If he chooses not to share anything with you, right? Oh, so and he so has to actually uh, uh, add an app to his phone and yeah. and give me permission to track him. Now, let's say he gives me permission to track him. What what could I learn about his behavior? Can I see how fast he is? Going as class. of now, you cannot, and so okay. those are the kinds of things that we think a lot about. And we did consider, you know, that whole teenage driver aspect of it, and we decided that you know there are enough issues to consider that we will not introduce it in this version of the product. There are other things we can do, and so you cannot see pretty much anything about him unless you're in the car with him. Okay. Right? So if both of you are in the car at the same time, you know anyway that same data appears in your app and his app. Both of you know. But if it's just him, unless he has chosen to share the location of where the car is parked, that's pretty much all you'll know. Got it. So, uh, okay. so Robert, when you're not, uh, when you guys aren't in, engaged in actually looking at that thing, put the camera below the, the desk because you okay. stick in there with it right like that, just so it's really bad on the other camera. So, kind of right. move it up. Cool. Okay. Right. Yeah, there you well, I was just about to get to the to right. the app. I'm going to jump in just real quick up to that point so you can talk about it. But I mean, you guys, you can see his data. If you sit down. His, That's the way to do it. Yeah. yeah. So take Got a it. look up there. You see, put it put it back where it was. You yeah. see the, the glare in it? Now put it, pull it back up where it was. Pull it up higher. Okay. A second ago, you had the glare right out of that yeah. right there. All Try right. to avoid that. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. So now breathe. Take a big breath in. Exhale. All right. Go for it. So uh, can we get uh, get into what this app does? Absolutely. Yeah. So this, when you open up the app, this is a screen that you see, and uh, it has different sections. I will start with the one at the bottom over here, and you can see that it shows the trips that you know my teammate Luba has taken uh, this week, and it shows you a week view. Okay. And so there is a car sliding through the different trips. So this is his phone. This is his phone. Yeah. Right? And I'm just showing you. So your phone details. would only show you your details. Yeah. His phone shows you what he did in the car. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so. What you see there is that's each individual trip, and if I tap on one, you can actually see the route along which I drove during that trip. And it tells me here that, hey, I drove one mile, and I spent 27 cents on that trip. And it also shows you what the rated EPA mileage was for that trip, and what did I actually get, right? And uh, so that is important because we, this is interesting, uh, I, I a total brain fart, because you're showing me the miles, uh, Rackspace pays me back for mileage done on trips that I'm doing on official business. Yeah. Can I use this to track, uh, can I tag that as work, as a work trip? That is one of the most requested features and yeah. we will very likely just add it really quickly because you know, we don't do that ourselves and it seems like that's a very, very frequent use case and this just does it for you automatically because let me tell you a little bit about the price and how we get it. You know, for most new cars, we can read the level of the fuel in the car, right? So yep. when it changes, when you start your car and it changes and it's suddenly full, 
we know that, hey, wait a minute, maybe you filled up. So we grab your location point and we know what the closest gas station is. And on the back end in the cloud, we have a feed of all of the latest gas prices for pretty much every gas station across the country. Yeah. So we can apply a very accurate price to what you might have paid and we show that accurate price over there, right? So in general, you get a very detailed picture of how, how much you're driving and how much money you're spending doing it. And you know, most importantly, at the bottom there, you see three metrics that we show, the rough brakes, you know, hard accelerations, and how many miles, did, how many minutes did you drive over 70 miles per hour. So the reason we show those uh, data points is because I mentioned earlier that small changes in the style of driving can lead to really large savings, right? Yeah. And those are the kinds of things that you can do when you're driving, which leads to a reduction in fuel efficiency. For example, if you go 70 on the highway instead of 80, yeah. that's an automatic improvement of fuel efficiency by 15%, right? And that really adds up over time. And so we are kind of showing those small things which can lead to a large reduction in fuel efficiency. We give you gentle feedback, not just in the app itself, but as you're driving, there is a speaker in this guy and you get audio feedback and it's just a gentle feedback. Our intention is not to be a backseat driver or anything like that. Yeah. It is to say that, hey, you wanted us to point out to you easy ways you could save 30% on the amount of money you spend on gas. So here's a simple way to do it. So that is at a trip level. And there's no monthly fee. To, this is a free app. You just pay the $70 and that's it? Yeah, and that is it. And uh, so apart from that, what you also see at the top is a summary for the week. Okay. Right? And what this shows you that score 74, you know, that is an indicator of how well are you doing. And what we suggest to our users is just try and maintain a high score. That's probably the easiest $500 or $1,000 you're going to save over the course of a year. Yeah. Right? And you also see details like what is your average MPG for the entire week? How many minutes did you spend in the car? And that's interesting for most users because they see numbers like eight hours or nine hours and they're like, wait a minute, I spent you know, so much time in the car and how many miles did you drive? So you get a really good summary of how are you using your car and that's information that most people just don't have. And uh, finally, there is the, you know, where is your car parked right now? And if yep. you tap on it, you will see that we are here in the office, in the Rackspace offices. Yep. And the car is parked over there. And when we need to go back, you know, we just walk back and you, know the location oh, that's really really cool um you're not yet hooking up to other systems like spotify or Waze. Uh, Waze is showing me traffic so you could you know show me uh how i drove home or something like that um spotify i listen to music so you could show me what songs i listened to <laughs> when i was on the golden gate bridge you know, Probably, yeah you could start doing that a too. lot of times I, I listen to a playlist or something like that or like pandora i'm listening to a radio station and i'm on the golden gate bridge and they play a great song and i i don't want to look at the phone because one it's illegal in california and two it's distracting also you always yeah. speed when you listen to this particular song so don't listen to it when yeah, you, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you should probably do that and so the last really interesting thing that I should show you here is you see a one over there on the side, right? Yeah. What that means is that, you know, your check engine light is on and there's one diagnostic trouble code that's set in your in your car. So you just tap on that and you get a notification the moment that yeah. happens, you get a notification and then you open up the app, you see, oh, okay, what is the engine code? It's it's P0102. What does that mean? And yeah. in most cases we even have a solution which tells you what the problem likely problem is. And uh, if you just want to tap on that and go look at, uh, uh, you know, one more help, you can Google it. Yeah, one here, tap, here it says the that. sensor's going bad, uh, probably. Yeah. And just turn it off and see if it comes back on as the recommendations. So. Yeah, so with one tap, on your, before you do that, you can even try and find, uh, you know, highly rated mechanics right around you. Oh, that's cool. And this shows you who are all the highly rated mechanics. One tap, you can call them up. And now you can have a conversation with context, right? It's not... Now, one time, I, and I think this happened at Rocky's car too, it, my oil light came on and said, stop the car right away because you're going to damage the uh, engine, right? Can you uh, see the local towing companies or local garages to call to come out to so your car? That's exactly what you do here, right? You, you say find nearby mechanics. You get a list of all of the 
all of the nearby uh, mechanics oh, and nice. you can pick the one you want you know where you are and where those mechanics are and you can easily call them up with one tap and you can even tell them hey i see that this is what is wrong with my car is it okay if i just clear it or is it important enough that i have to bring it in right now and so if it's not important enough one tap on the smartphone you know it and you can just yeah. go ahead and clear it'd, it it'd be nice if you hooked up to uh, my insurance company and knew, and told me which mechanics were approved by my insurance company so <laughs> those are all, again the concern that you had right privacy again the moment you start talking about insurance we are very wary about that yeah. and we want to make sure that we do it in the right way like and some are triple a i have a triple a membership and you could show which ones are triple a approved we should we should definitely improve that data and make it even more useful but anything we do we always approach it from like what is the best consumer experience right what is the yeah. user experience that we can provide and as you can see we, we try and uh, obsess over that and once we can once we are confident that it is something that actually adds some value yeah then we we'll go ahead and do it no it's really really cool um how is the company funded we were a part of right right after uc berkeley i mentioned it came out of research over there in the, the summer of 2011 we went to y combinator yeah. and after y combinator we raised uh, you know money we, our investors include and reason horowitz and founders fund and a number of amazing angels and uh, so yeah that's how we are funded yeah I, uh, finally cuz a lot of people are now trying the kickstarter thing trying to build hardware and build companies that do hardware how hard is it to convert from uh, you know getting a prototype to actually building a product that's in thousands of people's hands it's it's a very interesting challenge and uh, one in, you know one funny story is that when we raised the first round of funding for the company we were actually working on just a smartphone application and there was no hardware device and we raised a bunch of money and soon we realized that if we want to build a really compelling product experience it it needs a hardware device and so we started doing that and i went back and told <laughs> all our investors Hey, you invested in a software company, but we're doing hardware now. <laughs> Luckily, nobody was nobody was mad at us, and they realized that it was actually the right thing to do. But I'm not going to say hardware is easy. There are so many things that you have to uh, deal with that software companies just don't have to. But in our case, honestly, we don't think of ourselves as a hardware company yeah. because we built it because we needed to right to provide the experience that we wanted to we needed that hardware device but we think of ourselves primarily as a software and services company because the software on this device is updatable over the air through the phone mm -hmm. and uh, the app obviously can be updated so we expect to keep making improvements to the product over time and just keep pushing software updates and the hardware platform itself is pretty robust and generic that we can keep making those improvements over time. Where do you think the final question where do you think this is going cuz I'm writing a book on uh, context on it, and context is uh systems that know where you've been or what you've done and try to figure out what you're going to do in the future and it, certainly you know where I've been you you can know where I what grocery store I like whether or not I go to church what school I go to what how often i come to work when i go to work you you're going to know a lot of that stuff so where does this go in the future and are you thinking about using this data to serve me in some way so right now we are focused on making the car ownership experience a lot better right the way we think about it is when you add connectivity to a car you know you can make the ownership ownership experience a lot better in many ways and the car makers are doing a lot of things on their own and they are primarily focused on infotainment and navigation right pandora streaming into your car or 4g lte video to the back seat of your car or whatever else it is but we tend to think of the experience of owning a car that it's more than just you know when you're in the car driving from point a to point b yeah. right because your car is such a expensive you know part of your life that you spend so much time on that you might be sitting on your couch at home worrying about that check engine light that came on when you were driving home right so we think of it a little more in a holistic manner and and we and anything that we do really starts from is this interesting and compelling for the user right yeah. and I, usually when you think about these contextual services you you always think of oh you have this that and the other data what could you do with it most of the things aren't really interesting or compelling beyond the first two or three times that you use it right so we try to be careful about does this add sustained value to the user 
you know, a couple months and years. Well, with the car, you know when I'm going to need an oil change. Yeah, and those are exactly the kinds of things, right? Or when I'm going to need new tires Wh or a Why do I have to remember as the owner of a car when it's time to get the oil changed or when it's time for service or look up the service book and come on, like I have this connected computer, like tell me, make like, when there's a recall or whatever it is, why don't I just get a push notification? And there are so many things related to the ownership of your car that should just work. Right? But when it comes to the car, it's always about 10 years behind in terms of technology and that's a structural limitation of that industry. But you know, we think that with a smartphone and with a small device like this which connects to the car, you can make that experience a lot better without having people you know, or expecting them to go buy a new car. Which yeah. It's really cool. I can't wait to get mine. So thank, thank you, you so much for what you're doing. Where do we learn more about it? You can just go to automatic.com okay. and it is spelled as you would think it is spelled, automatic. Not like automatic from Matt, <laughs> no, which makes WordPress. <laughs> A-U-T-O-M-A-T-I-C.com. Just go and that's our website and we're taking pre-orders now. Yeah. And It uh, comes out in July right now? Or yeah, so our first until? batch was sold out. It was supposed yeah. to ship in May and that batch is sold out now and we're scrambling to make more. And So if you pre-order now, you will get it in July and that's where we are. Very cool. I'm getting one in the July batch, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.